Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, Director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is October 2nd, 2023, and we're here for another part in the oral history of Evaristo Roman. Um, and today, Evaristo will be showing us his, some of his mini certifications, uh, different letters that he's received from students and other clients of his over the years. Um, and he'll be talking about his career as a social worker, mental health care workers, a specialist in infectious diseases, really um, a lot of professional uh, qualifications that Evaristo has and that he'll be touching on today. Um, so without further ado, Evaristo, why don't you um, start us off uh, uh, <coughs> with some of these documents here? Um, yeah, yeah. I want to start. There's many. And that's something I might have to take over we, some of my most, well, let's start by taking them out, like that. This whole box here, look yeah. at this. Here's some papers on how I used to turn in my papers in college. You have to be, there's like assignment, you know. Bound. Be very professionally. Look made. at that, yeah. You know, because they want to, it speaks a lot about how you turn in your papers. It does. So when you put them in a binder, you make them look more professional. They look at that. The professors look at that. Here's another one on constructive action. Remember, I went to a social uh, human services school, so everything that was taught were towards human services, everything. So they bypass like an associate, right? Yeah. They bypass all that. They went straight into um, the actual social work uh, courses. You know, you get the history courses, you get um uh, all the other the, the the math of course the statistics you know and all that stuff you get all that but all to gear all to gear gearing to solve problems i see you know you know so that is, that is. this is a right here um when i when i was awarded this award, this award right here, All right? This is from Promesa and Channel Seven. The it's called the Above and Beyond Award. I got it with um, two other people. It was three of us that got it that year. Um, but not the same award. It's just uh, they, they only give three awards. One of them was Negron, uh, Ray Negron from the Yankees. Okay, sure. Baseball Operation New York Yankees, right? He was one. The other one that got it was Rosiana Rosado. She published it as CEO uh, of the Spanish newspaper at the time. Sure. And then myself, Evarito Roman. Look at that. Case manager, leadership coordinator, health educator, and hepatitis trainer. Okay, the reason why they say the hepatitis trainer is because I, I took the. They called they called the agency, Hospital Multi Service, and they asked for two people. Uh, to take this training, for KSAC, where you become a faculty member and you become a trainer trainer which means you train staff members to do uh, hepatitis C, A, B, and C, and substance use connection. Wow. Along with other stuff, you know. And that's why I got that one. Of course, when I went into the college, I only needed one point for my equivalency, and they just gave it to me. Oh, wow. Because I only... I, when I took my equivalency, um, 
I had just come out of Woodburn, um, and that was when I was uh, uh, 1973, 74, 75, probably. Um, it was like, um, uh, I'm Richmond, you, uh, uh, what's that school in 68th Street around there? Julia Richmond? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Julia so, Richmond. I think yeah, that's Yeah, okay, yeah. And I spoke in that school afterwards. Right? And it was like 600 people that took that test for the equivalency that day. And we took all the sessions, but when it got to the math part, um, 15 minutes after they gave the papers out for the test, I started seeing people walk out. Oh, walk out. Really? Walk up because it didn't have one adding, one, it didn't have no adding, no subtraction, no division, no multiplication. Everything was formulas, and, wow. and, you know. So everybody, everybody just started walking out. Basically, only about six years and I finished test the whole test. Wow. And I did what I remember, because when I was a woman, I was in the highest classes inside. And yeah. In fact, they released me because they said I was uninstitutionalized. I didn't belong in the prison. Yeah. Right? So, and I was back probably 119, something like that. Um, so, because I was in Catholic school in Puerto Rico, I, I, I seen the altar boy position open up. I got that one. I really got it just to walk around and give the little change they need to give so I could just be out of the... I became a tier man there, which means I was in charge of the floor, um, because I needed to come out and say, let me do something, let me do something. And it was a, 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 a PO called, uh, a correction officer called uh, Renaissance. After the, he was in a railway prison after the riots. Yeah. And he, like, really damaged people. So he was a roughneck. But he used to aim at me, and I used to move side to side. And that baton used to hit the floor, boom, I used to hear it. I used to keep trying. So the guy was about to leave. So the guy in charge, you know, the, the chairman. Yeah. So when he left, he assigned me. So that means if people needed something, they would put their towels outside the cell because we had wooden doors. And I would go see whatever they needed. And I would help him out. I would get it. And, of course, I would juggle. You know, you want me to take this over there? Well, I'm going to get it. You yeah, know? sure. But the basic things I, I allowed them to get every weekend, I had to take somebody, uh, six people out um, to just clean the whole, the whole tier. Yeah. And, and uh, I made it, you know, I, I was democratic about it. I, I took two of each ethnic group. Yeah. I didn't want to take all Puerto Rican because they ain't going to say I'm, you know. So I would take like two, two, two Latino. Not Latin, I hate to use Latino because yeah, that sure, word sure. was given to us. Sure. You know, uh Arawaks or whatever you wanna call them. Um or call us, you know, Boricuas. But basically that's what was in there at that yeah. time, Boricuas, right? So I took two and two Caucasians and two blacks. Sure. So they get everything. And I will rotate, you know, so because what they do after we clean, I would say, go ahead, we clean it, we can go watch TV. And at that time, there was a program called Soul Train that they wanted to see the girls and they want to see everything dancing. So that's, you know. But in any event, that's why that uh, I finished the test and I, fin I passed every area, but I just needed one more. Mm. For all those years, I had 224. So when I got into uh, uh, Metropolitan College in New York, yeah, right. It basically they allowed you to come in and work towards your GED while you're there, while you're taking college courses. Sure. While you're working in the field, because a lot of people in that college worked in the field oh, already, okay. and they know they have to further their education, so that's why they're in there. Sure. And that is a, a, a expedited college. Which means whatever you do in six and a half months in a basic CUNY college, we did in three and a half months. Mm. So, you know, we have work up the yin-yang. I'm I mean? sure. Papers, and, and every every class wanted a paper, every class, and you had to read, and you had to. So you sacrifice a lot. So I, I, I went to school Wednesday from 6 to 10, and then all day Saturday, from 8 in the morning, my first class, about six at night. Wow. 
So I, I, that was it. Yeah, you know. And, uh, and we and we had a campus here on uh, Concord on the uh, 49th Street. Then they everything moved to um, down by Canal Street. Oh, I see. Just before the tunnel, right there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Tribeca, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Everything moved down there. And I got that one. And then I was get, I was awarded this one. That's the way. I was awarded this one. For the highest GPA. Okay, and what's that say on there? Uh, it says CCF June 2006 at Arito, Metro Metropolitan College of New York. Wow, look at that. I have my high, the, high, the highest GPA. Yeah. Yeah. And that came with five hundred dollars. Oh, nice. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, that sure. Was a, Welcome. That's a great, <laughs> a great award. And this one I got so when I, I, I played in the Latin band. I played in the Latin band, Timbales. Oh, and they okay. gave me this because uh, of, uh, I won a, a little contest on the Timbales, what we call drums. Sure, sure. What you guys call drums. Then that, my paddleboard ones, you know that one. The large one back there in the yeah, back, right? Yeah, the paddleboard one in Orchard Beach. These are for uh, uh, Boston Community College, the, the, the runs and, and all that that we did. Yeah. Because I had so much coming out, you see. I, if I had a structured family that would save all that, yeah. I would have so much. Absolutely. But I don't have anything now because everything... That, Oh, it was all lost over the years, I know. Okay. Um, what was that? Another one. Um, okay. Let's let, let's start. We'll start with this one. Okay. Great. This is uh because I was more or less running the infectious disease unit after they 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 fired the the director, coordinator, anything, uh, whatever you want to call it, at the unit, supervisor. Yeah. I went. So one of the, I took managing day-to-day, -day, uh, managing day-to-day -day crisis on the job. I see. See, because you have to deal with people. You have to deal with situations. You have sure. to deal with this. So this teaches you how to deal with your staff members. Yeah. Any type of conflicts. In other words, conflict resolution. Sure. Right? One way. This one I love. This is a ride. Okay, this I'll makes you an HIV specialist. Okay. Right here. And this is a three month training. Strictly on HIV. Wow, 24 sessions, it says, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, they teach you everything. This was the most highest regard uh, um, training you can get on HIV back in the day. Wow. You know? So I'm very proud of this one. Okay? This is the one that is, uh, this gives me the, gave me a, 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 a number. Faculty member number. Oh yeah, look at that. For the uh, Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services Bureau of Work Workforce Development Training Unit. Yeah. Faculty member certification. Look at that. Yeah. Right. This one. I graduated from printing trade school. That's right. Right? And I had 27 straight A's here. Wow. They caught, I don't know, uh, I don't know you're too young for this, but they had a strike. Uh, um, the newspaper strike, the Daily News, all the yeah. strike. And they called the school because they needed, B. Altman. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They needed somebody, right? So the school sent me. Sure. That was a, that was pretty cool. That the school thought I was qualified to do that. Yeah, I went there not knowing that position. I just went there showing them the work I had. Sure. 
and I got paid the maximum amount. Wow. For that position. Wow. I even tried to get 50 cents more an hour for that. Yeah. Right? And she said, I can't give it to you. <laughs> because I, if I gave it to you, I'm a pocket. I couldn't play. That's all the position plays. I said, okay. I went in and left because somebody had an accident and he was going to be out. Yeah. So I went in. The, the, there was an older man. He taught me two days. Two days. He taught me, you know, he showed me everything, everything. Wow. Then he went on vacation. When he came back, he thought he was going to find a mess. Yeah. The shelves were clean. I did all the signs for all the B-Men, uh, discounts and all that for b -Men. It was a direct press. Yeah. Right? I packaged them. I sell them out. I mailed them out. Everything, 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 everything. When that, when that man came back, he was both of these men, these I told two days, two days I teach him, he did everything. <laughs> he was going all over the office. I was still getting my school money. Yeah. My social um my BOG and all that. Plus my social security money that I was getting because back then when you were in a day when you were an addict, right? And you were like in a program. They gave you a 900 number huh? because they considered drug use under mental health. Sure, sure. Right? So I was still getting my, my, my money. Yeah. Right? So one day I was looking, I was looking at, at my check, right? At my pay, at my pay, at my regular pay. And, look, and he came over me and he looked at my check. Yeah. He got totally upset, this man. Yeah. And I was making more than him. Wow. And he taught me. Yeah. Meanwhile, the the director of that unit of the of that department or supervisor, whatever you want to call him, I he used to be Alexander's. Back then we had Alexander's. He used to be Alexander, he used to work in Alexander's. So he worked there now. I used to cover his back good. Whenever he was out the office, whenever everything, or his wife called, okay, he just stepped up. I used to do it really good. He wanted to keep me. He said, just tell me he's seen your check. Huh. Just tell me because he's ramping. I want to keep you. It was for Christmas, too. Yeah. For about December. Yeah, because they went on a Christmas party and everything. They had present, a present for me and all that. And I couldn't take an old man's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, he didn't look over my check. Yeah. I couldn't take an old man's job. I just couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, I was still getting my job, going to school. I, I'll i get another job. This man needs this job. You know, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And he told me, look, I know he did. And then he said, I know he did. I just said, no, he didn't look. I had to because he wanted to keep me. Yeah. So I didn't even show up to the party, <laughs> but they had a present for me, everything. Oh, like wow. That, you know what I mean? Okay. Well, that, that's everything. If you, if you want me to put it on the air, let me know. Okay? Okay, sure. It, it, it's getting a little hot. In fact, let me show put it on the air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This guy hasn't showed up. 130 minutes. Tell me if you get too cold. Okay, we'll do. I don't know if it's that injection that the shot I got still. Okay. Let's go. This one is uh, for the uh, sat eyes. I suspect it's from the Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services. This one is says I has successfully completed infectious disease training entitled the ABC ABC of Hepatitis, the Alcohol and Substance Abuse Connection 
training, the training, the trainer. Okay. Okay. I see. So, I mean, that would train exactly. staff members. Yeah, and I sure. I deal with that situation. Right? There might be some simple tacky ones here, but that's. This one, uh, this is uh, when I worked in harm reduction. Oh, that's right, that's right. I worked by, I learned a needle stick and all that, how to teach people how to shoot correctly, how to use correctly. Sure. In order to avoid transmission. That's when I right. worked in harm reduction, that year alone, we had, uh, like, we picked, we, 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 uh, we gave over four million needles. Wow, wow. And we collected seven. Wow. So that means, those opportunities of transmissions were taken off the street. Absolutely. Because back then, you would walk around the street, you would see needles everywhere. Uh huh. Now, that's how people were getting sick or getting AIDS. That's right. That's Not right. AIDS, really, HIV. HIV, a yeah, AIDS, yeah, yeah. AIDS is a uh, diagnosis. Sure. It's not a disease, it's not anything like Sure. That. Are you going to come out? All right, so this is a uh, confidentiality laws. Oh, okay, and that's very important to have that certification. Yeah, look at that. This training, this one in Chickatelli Exponents, uh, they were the main trainers at that time. Oh, okay. Them and Chickatelli and the Department of Health. Yeah. Uh, uh, health and Mental Hygiene. Those are the ones that are uh, really important. These are some, uh, just are some uh, addiction medicine knowledge workbook. There's a workbook that we have to study. Okay, right? I see, yeah. That we got, and I got this from the state. I got this, all these, all these right here. Um, this is uh, my, my name, and it says pain, it says uh, addiction medicine knowledge workbook. This one is in pain and substance use. Okay, I see. This is how I deal with people that are very ill and sick and going to. Right? Okay, this was addiction medicine and chemical uh, dependency treatment incorporating addiction medicine into addiction treatment. Okay, I see. How you, you know, how you bring the person from point from a baseline stage to a maintenance, uh, a maintenance stage. I see, I see. You know, because you know, so we we always begin on baseline, and baseline is basically where they're at at the moment that you do the motivational interview. Okay, and because sure. I also got a motivational interview and training where you learn to pick out the positive in the person while you're interviewing them. Okay. And, and, and use that to open up, to help them open up, oh, and I to see. show them that they have potential and that things could be done and all that stuff. You pick out the good stuff. You know, a lot of, and that's why that's why it's called motivation interview because you want to motivate the person while you're interviewing them. Sure. You want you want to uh, uh, say, listen, you got these good qualities, and let's work with that. You yeah. Know, let's do this. So in other words. Not to make the person meet them where they're at, That's always, right. but then show them the possibility. Sure. Okay. There's a, a completion, successfully has completed Staten Island University Hospital Chemical Dependency Rehabilitation, right? Uh, this is how people in detox. I see. I see. Look at that. Right? Yeah. This is how you send them on long-term detoxes, um, how to get them there, um, how to work with them while they're there. Because some trainings I got just to have it, but I need, I know that at some point I will use them. Absolutely. Uh, let me see. This is what given to me for certified work into a case manager uh, of the week. Oh, okay. Look at that. Case manager of the week. I think it's week or month, but I don't know what the hell. Yeah. And it's signed by a. Oh, I couldn't tolerate the lady. But, and, and the director, Mr. Rosa, my mother Rosa. Oh. The executive okay. director. Uh, he, he really. I was one of his 
pay the people. When he couldn't make meetings, yeah. he would set me sometimes. Oh, when okay, the administrator, sure. because I was always dressed, I learned the word charismatic to two directors in the training that we all had. Um, and they had to choose a word for me. It was the director of Maria of Mental Health and the director of Substance Use, uh, which we were, he was always trying to get me to work in that unit. But our administrator, Carcano, at that time, he says, no, because he would make meetings with me. And I would have to tell him, listen, he wants a meeting with me. And he would say, no, 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 you're not going nowhere. We need you here. <laughs> I got plans for you. So I would make the meetings for them because they knew how I knew how to network. I was well-spoken. You know, I was well-mannered. And I knew a lot of people in the field. Yeah. And that was very important. Okay, this one is another overview of HIV infections. Okay. Because every now and then you have to get overviews. You have to go through everything again. You know, I see. And get the same. You get like renewal or renewal, something. Renewal, like yeah, right? everything, new information. Domestic violence uh, in lesbians and gay, transgender, and all that. Okay, yeah. Look at that. That. Right? Because yeah. you got to see the difference between regular people. You see, transgenders and gay and lesbian, they already victimized. That's right. All right? So it's hard for them to say, oh, excuse me. Oh, sure, sure. This one was when I made the Dean's. I'm going to get to this one. Okay, this is. You got it back up? Yeah. Okay. This was uh, when I made the Dean's list. Okay, at Metropolitan College. Yeah, the first okay. time I made the Dean's List was something good. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Every time I was making it back in the days when I made the Dean's List, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> you know? So this, uh, that's, that's, that's something. Uh, it's, we laugh at this now, though. Okay. Case Act. Okay. Introducing case management six hours. KSAC, CPB, and CPS credits. Provider number. That's my number. Um, and then it says, uh, right, the date. Regional Training Center. Okay. Evaristo Roman. Uh, this letter is to attend recognizing your com completion of the New York State Department of Health Aid Institution training program. Okay, look at that. Look at that. So this is already probably the fifth or sixth certification on AIDS alone. Yeah, yeah. That basically was my field because I'm yeah. positive. Sure. I've been positive since 1985. By the grace of God, I'm still here. Absolutely. There's a development New skills and enhanced outreach. Okay. Look you know what that. outreach is, right? You take people, you teach them how to go out into the community. Uh huh. How to engage people to come in to get tested. Yeah. Right to get come in and you and, and and do give them the education necessary or the referral necessary to go. What happened was when I was hired, <clears throat> I was with multi service. It was as an outreach coordinator. Oh, okay, I see. But the pay wasn't what I needed. Because at the same time that he was interviewing me, I got a call for, and he allowed me to take a call. Yeah. And it was that they gave me a job for 18 hours for $20,000 at that time. Oh, wow. Which was good money. Yeah, sure. Just 18 hours. And he's looking at me, well, I can't pay you twice as that. Uh -huh. I said, but this is what I'm going to do. Since so my friend referred me there, a good friend, you know. And, um, I said, I'll work, I'll take this money, but in a month we revisit. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you what I could do. Yeah. So they were out there actually looking, the, the, the testing counselors yeah. were out there actually looking for people to test themselves. Uh huh. All right, because they didn't have nobody to test. I see, wow. So that took away a lot of their time, but I'm sure. No, yeah, because right? they didn't have no work to do because now I got there and I taught the team how to do the outreach and I went out with them to do the outreach and 
within two weeks, they were testing like 20 people each. Wow. Within a month, they came to me, oh, please, stop. Too many they people. Were, <laughs> they had like 30, 35 to 40 each wow. a day. And that was it. So one of my friends that was the director of the um, of the parole unit, yeah, right. He started going around saying, "Oh, he's outreaching store and air and everything like that." No, he's the one that introduced me to the Bronx Care Network. Oh, okay, okay, and okay. Socrates. Yeah. So you know, I worked with Socrates' brother when I was a supervisor in uh, the Asian Prison Project supervisor for Osborne. Uh, so I worked with him. So we, I worked in, with the prisons. I educated the place program. I had twelve staff members under me, right? That would do the outreach and with the prison. We would call. They would call us. We were the main. They would call us with any situation they had. A lot of times they just called to talk. Yeah, sure. With somebody from the outside world or complain. So I had two offices: the one in my office and the one, the big office where we had all the phones. Yeah. Because I was hotline supervisor also. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I would have my desk with my phones connected to every line. Yeah. So whenever they couldn't handle something, they would send it to me. Uh -huh. And I would deal with it. Okay. So every three months before, every, the three months before a person went to the board yeah. inside the prison, I would write a letter of reasonable assurance that we were working with that. Prison I see. Cause every every prison has a clinic and a hospital assigned to that prison. Okay. So if they wasn't getting the treatment, I would call and find out what's going on with this. Why is he getting his medication? Why is not this? Why? So I, I, you know, I did have a lot of pull. I call out. Uh, uh, there was this man. He did ten years in. Right for murder. Then he did three years for, they say he was sold for his daughter, which wasn't true. I believe he said he did, he only took the, the, the charge. Yeah. Because he didn't want to put his daughter through a trial thing. Sure. So, what happened was that, let me just What happened was that they, he, he did 13 years, and he was on, he was signed 13 years. He was already in there 14. Wow. Because he had a, a sex tied to his thing. The P.O.'s didn't give a shit. Yeah, 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 sure. He was saying people were rejecting him. Yeah. But he said he didn't want to die in there, so I took care of that, and I found my place to stay. Wow. You know, and um, he was so grateful. Yeah. But you know why I believed him? Because his wife married him while he was in prison. Oh, okay. His daughter was always going to see him. Sure. So that sure. told me that, you know, you're probably right. You yeah, know? yeah. Any, in any, anyway, I always say in any event. Somebody don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. That's you know that's just part of the things I deal with that with that with that part of because uh, every Wednesday I would go in to the prisons and I would see what's going on. I and see. I mean, with the, every once a month, every uh, two weeks, I don't know. Whenever another person had decided he was in, I was in charge of that decision because you had to drive out there to the prisons, you know, and then. When they will get released, we will already have a vet for them. All their, all their uh, uh, medical needs, like uh, appointments done, their welfare appointments done, are ready for wow. them, everything like that. So they 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 will come out set because females that come from and beyond eight hours, they know how to make money. Yeah. So we need to have somebody there to take them directly. So yeah. staff member always waiting for a person. Sure. Girls with girls, men with men. Yeah. Okay, we did that. But anyway, this is an outreach, the outreach uh, certification. That was short for me, because then I was still doing that, 
And that's when they made me a case manager right uh -huh. away. There were so many people upset there because they've been there a long time. Yeah. But they wasn't trained like I was trained. I know. I mean, look at all of the certificates you know I mean? even so, so far. So even though, even though I wasn't the senior, everybody from everywhere that dealt with that unit dealt with me. Yeah, I see. Even the director, uh, uh, Rico, and his name was Rico, he got signed up. One time they, they wrote him up when he came back from vacation because he didn't leave me in charge of the floor. He left the senior case manager in charge. Uh -huh. And they saw, I said, but that wasn't right. She's the one that should be in charge. Yeah. Uh, because she's a senior. Yeah, but they said, but right? she's not clinical. Mm. You're the clinical person at unit. He should have had that sense. Yeah. Because, if, you know, to know to leave you in charge, because you know how to make decisions, you know how to solve problems, you know how to deal with everything, you do administrative stuff with us, you're learning all that stuff. So because of it, he, and I, I thought that was unfairly, but you know that's the way they look at it. Sure, absolutely. Okay, this is a certified Arito Ramon Hospital Multi Trader has successfully completed three hour training and identification, reporting, and prevention of child abuse uh -huh. and maltreatment. Wow. Okay. Look at that. Another very important. Yeah, I got another one that actually gave me the the, the life the number two report anytime I see it, even at, at work. Wow. You know? Updated, another updating uh, clinical management. This uh -huh. is updating clinical management. I see, I see. See? Clinical yeah. management of HIV infection. Yeah, you yeah. know, you have, to, you have to be clinical. It's, it, it's not actually so easy, you know. Um, And they write to define the, the, the difference between personality traits, personality disorders, learn about personality disorders, most com commonly identifying among substance users, and DM, DCM. Aha, uh -huh. I see. Discuss acting and defense used by clinic to enhance engagement. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> That's a that big certification. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's... And the DCM, that's that huge book, right? I don't know what version they're on now, but I know they update it every now and then. They do. Tuberculosis and uh, tuberculosis and HIV connection. Okay, look at that, yeah. Did you see a lot of tuberculosis that... Yeah, and of course we, we, I got another one trained on it because when, see, I, I, I have something in my mind for a long time. So when I used to see my doctor, yeah, I used to always ask questions. Yeah, sure. Right? And they would let me in between my lunch because they knew I was working. So when I got there, I would just let them know I'm here. Yeah. They would come out and get me. I don't I didn't have to wait on no line. Yeah. But they got along with me well. And I would learn from them. I would, for a long time, I used to ask myself, and my clients would ask me, that were married, one was positive, one wasn't. Okay, yeah. They never transmitted. Huh, yeah. Okay? And that happened often. Yeah. One girl asked me, I said, I'll get back to you. I'm like, I wanted to give her the right information. Sure. So in my mind, I said, well, people that take I and H, right? Yeah. They don't transmit. Huh. Right? So you not have to know how to, also, if you're working on my people, somebody that has tuberculosis in the room, how to keep it always bright, how to always have a windows open, okay. right? how to have a ventilation in the room, things yeah. like that. But that stood in my head, right? So I asked the doctor, why why they're not transmitting? Why? And then what do you think? I said, I believe it's because they're on their medication. Yeah. And they said they found their medication, even in their sperm and you know, in their fluids. Yeah, sure. While they have sex, that means it's probably preventable. It, it, everything's working. Yeah. They're not spreading the. There's my the way I thought about it. Um, and he says for a long time, us doctors been 
wondering about when transmission actually occurs. Yeah, sure. Right? And they say zero conversion. The minute a person get or think they got infected with HIV, um, the blood converts right away huh. into fighting and building antibodies, right? Yeah, yeah. So what happens is that you can't test them right away. You got to give them a time like a month or three weeks I see. to build enough antibody to detect the test. I see. Okay? So if, if one is on medication and they're undetectable, yeah. they have no virus running in their body. Yeah. They, the virus is controlled around here in the back of the screen. So it's, it's, it's boom, it's trapped. Yeah. Right? So they can they can't transmit anything. I see. Okay? But the people that are transmitting are the people that don't know they they passed it. Yeah. Right? The people that are just became positive, uh, right? Yeah. And the people that don't take their medications and have a high viral count in their body. Okay, sure. That means HIV is running all over. Because yeah. what it is is you take you take it like a teaspoon of, of blood, right? Yeah. And you try to count the virus in that little teaspoon. Yeah. So they they it, it's like uh like a, like a study or anything like they do, right? And according to the count, if now these days if it's under twenty, you could even go under twenty. Wow. Like me. Wow. They don't find under twenty. They only can't even count twenty on me. Wow. Okay. Because for, for a long time I had sex and a condom broke and everything like that, and I would ask, and then the girl would say, "Okay, we're not using it." Yeah, sure. But I would take them to the doctor with me, always to cover my back. Yeah. So they won't say, "Oh, they like, you gave me this," because they would know that I was positive, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't never transmit. Yeah. I never transmitted anything. Yeah. You know, so I myself wondering why, you know, because I'm, I'm very compliant with my medication. Sure. So. That's what that's what I have to tell my clients. And one time a doctor argued with me, a doctor. Because we need to have a case a conference every week every week on, on a client. Yeah. Every case manager had two clients to bring. And he said, No, that you still gotta wear a con and this and that. And I said, I said I'm trying I said, You really don't. Yeah. You really don't if they if, if they're undetectable. Yeah. And they've been undetectable for a long time, more than six months or that. You don't have to wear really wear a condom because unless you do other behaviors and a doctor, ah, nah, nah, nah. and I say, you see, doctors give bad information sometimes. Uh -huh. See, I'm trained at this because those doctors need to call me in a lot of times, right? To quit because they just didn't know certain things and they were doctors. Yeah, sure. Right. They wrote me up behind that. Really? And you know what? I was right. Yeah. Years later, I ran to that doctor and said, you were right, you were right. He said, yeah, it's too late now. Wow. You know? And the girl didn't want to write me up. It was the director that was so fearful of me because she only made $5,000 more than me with two masters. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody came to me, not her. Mm. And the executive director sat us down twice and said, I'm not going to fire you, and I'm not going to fire you. Learn how to work. Wow. Because yeah. when I think of this unit, I think of two people, you and you. I see. All these directors and board members one time scolded her because I invited her to a meeting because they, they have money, right? Yeah. And then there's money. They need they needed to use to something. So one of the board members asked me, "Do you have an idea of something?" I said, "Well, I wrote a paper in school yeah. where I had to do a program with a budget of a million dollars." Yeah. And I couldn't give you that. Just look at it, you know. So it was uh, people coming out of prison. Yeah. Right. To pre that are positive to prevent continuous transmission in the street. Okay, I see. Okay, treating people just coming out of prison. Yeah. And while they are on um, 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 PO, um, parole and all that, so they used it. Wow. So they, so they brought me in the meeting. I said, "Could you ask the director?" I knew she was going to get pissed on me. 
Could, could you ask her to come to the meeting? So she came to the meeting and she sat down and she said, oh, the senior's not here. And that man blew a casket. <laughs> that man said, you're here because he invited you. He asked me to bring you here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. He said, yeah, but she's a senior. She said, however, real loud. When I deal with that unit, since I've been here, I deal with him. Huh. I deal with him. Yeah. And you here because of him. Yeah. So remember that. Oh, man, she wrote me up quick. Huh. But you huh. see, the second director taught me how to rebuttal. Sure. So I rebuttal everything he wrote up. Yeah. She got so tired, she touched you at home. She wasn't accepting no more rebuttals. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I just on the smart. Before my, I would share my rebuttal, I would show certain people my I paper. See. I see. He said, wow, she's like that. Yeah. Wow, she's like that. Yeah. Because a lot of people didn't like her. They, they, they ran her out of another unit, uh, on the, uh, our sound view clinic. Yeah. Nobody got along with her. Uh -huh. People were asking for transfer. People wanted to resign. People that's... Anyway, I didn't get the director's job because I didn't have a master's. Mm. And Albany is strict on paper. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I knew how to do the job better than her, but she didn't know a goddamn thing about it. Mm -hmm. She went to a training with us one day, and she stood in the back. And all of us participating here, when they asked her to participate, she said, oh, no, I'm here just watching. You're not here to watch, you're here to learn. Yeah, for sure. Well, she didn't know. Okay, anyway. mm -hmm. okay there's self-awareness and being and counseling and recovery. This is enough. Okay, yeah. Look at that one. This is when you're account, you know, you're recovering. This is that your counselor, uh, self awareness, and well being, for counselors in recovery, which means I was in recovery. Yeah, sure. So sometimes you have to know how to not transfer, have transference with with with, with, you, with your with your plan, and that happens a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and people, you gotta know how to separate. You gotta know. See, a, lot, a lot of people had a, a hard time with, even in college, I saw this, you know, um, when they talk about gay in, in the classroom, everybody, I said, man, I got up one day, I said, you guys, are, none, none of you guys are going to be good. Yeah. Because you haven't dealt with your own issues. That's right. And in this field, you got to deal with your own issues. Yep. Before you could be effective with anybody else. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because people have a, pro a problem dealing with gays and lesbians, but I don't. Yeah, sure. Because I'm trained. Sure. I, in fact, I got trained with, I, I think her name is Rosalyn, the first gay transgender woman here. In, 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 uh, and she gave the training. And I thought that was a woman when I was in the sure. training. She said, all right. She said, all right, who are the married men? Everybody raised their hand, right? First she said, who are the gays? And I was, oh, yeah. Who are the lesbians? Oh, yeah. Who are the, oh, married. Who are the married man? Who are the single man? Everybody, and then the single man raised their hand. Okay, you the guy that I want to talk to. <laughs> I didn't know she was trying. That's how good she was. Yeah. But then she taught us, you know, how to look for the core. Yeah. And the person, because their observational behaviors, right? And they are, you got to look for natural core behaviors when they like that as a child. I remember sure. in public school, I seen a couple of gay that they were just gay. Yeah. You want an ass or anything like that? Oh. <laughs> I see you call. Oh, no, I'm all right. Just Okay. You understand? So, you you know, so you have to know how to deal with them as human beings. And one of them, I had a lot of, in my case, so and many wanted to continue to come to my case, so was because I knew how to deal with them. You know, they are human beings. They, you know, uh, like I said, a lot of them have been raped. A lot of them, you know, just look ugly. You know, and they feel ugly. And this, the, the ones that accept them are the, that type, you know, that that culture. So they become that culture. But so, you know what I mean? So you have to understand a, a lot. Okay, this one is successfully completed. Education and training and clock hours. Uh, identifying psychological behavior and physical reactions to stress. Mm. Learn techniques to short 
long-term stress relief and long-term stress management. Wow, that's another very important one. Look at that. Okay. And I practice this still today. Absolutely. Somebody needs a copy. I think there's a copy. Yeah, there's a copy. Okay, this is Paz. Back in the days, they have Paz, the magazine. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. This is my participation with Paz. Okay. And how I, I used that. to get them, because I used to send the magazines to the prisoners. Oh, I see. I used to send them literature and everything so they can read. They sure. educate themselves and everything. Like, you're right. You need water. Like oh no! Oh no! I'm fine. It's just okay. A little water. Wow! Water. This, this was 2001, and that's when I first started. See, I started my training back in '95. Wow! So I, I do, see. That's how you built up all these. Yeah, because I'm not. Not only that, I got all these basically from 29. Because when I was in Samaritan, they didn't want to give me any jobs big. So oh. even though everybody wanted me to be an orientator because I knew everything, I knew the rules, I knew how to use them, I'm good in groups, you yeah. know. That's what sets you up to be real clinical. Remember, I was this when I was a kid you know, from Sera. I graduated from Sera. That's right. Okay, and then I graduated from Mensa. Yeah. Okay, so these are two. And then I graduated from Sera. So I knew how to do this. But the behaviors I dealt with as a kid were kick behaviors. Uh-huh. During the years, I became it became adult behavior uh, and, and situations that I have not to deal with. So that kept me using. I see. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would use for two years, and then I stopped for about six, seven years, and another two years. Uh huh. But all through my life, I, I try to stop. Yeah, sure. And then it came to a point where they said, "Well, if you are methadone, you can't, and you're positive, you can't kick methadone because your body can't handle it." Yeah. So they kept that fear in you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Until I, I I challenged that fear, and I, I when when I, I I locked up for something I didn't do, and um, uh, but I know so many people that when I got into the prison I kept I kept getting my dose of methadone. Sure. Because I knew the people in the keep program. Ah, uh, I see. I see. So what happened was that four months in I accepted a program. Four months after, I said, no program has come for me. So I'm going to bail myself out. I had some money. I told my mother, bring my money to the next court date. I'm bailing myself out. Yeah, yeah. So on that court date, right, they say we have a bet for you. Okay, I see. So that was the biggest decision of my life. Yeah. So it was either bail myself out or accept the terms of the program. I see. Which means if you don't complete, right, you do seven, four and a half to seven years. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay. I see. Me, I was tired. I wanted to stop. Yeah. You know? So I came out on a Thursday. The bet wasn't ready wow. until Monday. Okay. So I had the money. I helped her. I helped Yolanda Cardona uh -huh. from uh, um, from from. Uh, a uh, program is 165th Street, right off the court, on the concourse. Help her find me a program for the for the weekend so I can get my methadone on it. Yeah. So we found Beth, uh, uh, San Bonavis. But that night she knew I was going to get high because I, I needed my meth. Yeah, sure. So I, I stood co close to home. Yeah. I ran to a gay girl that liked me for a long time, and we just... Did what we did that weekend, and we spent the whole weekend together, and and that's why I tell you, gay girls are not always uh, lesbians, are not always lesbian gay girls. You gotta know because a lot of them have asked me for, to, for kids. You know, yeah. in my lifetime, many of them have asked me for kids. Right? Yeah. So I know. I kept their clothes, and on that Monday I showed up. Wow. And then when I got to some. I said, I'm so pissed off at this. Because I was in Samaritan before that. So I think I was in a part where I, I, I made the decision yeah. when I got to the program. I was in, I was there before, but they ran rolled me out because I, I knew too much. And I was a counselor before. I Remember, see. I was a youth component counselor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
right, in 1835 University, that Jewish place. Sure. That be, uh, that was brought by Sadat. That's right. That's right. I remember. And they had the Andrews House around there, on the hospital, the Veterans Hospital. They had a lot of things in two years. I mean, they they blew up. Um, so what happened was, I knew where everything was at. They asked me where the cats at. I said, well, I seen them over there. When I was a, a, a expediter, which means, you know, you run around, you make sure everything's right. People yeah. are not in the room. People, you know, I used to write my notes. I need to do everything good. I found that shit tore up on the floor because they didn't want me to be so good because uh -huh. now they, they needed to be the same way. And not only that, they were dirty as a mother. Mm. Staff members were having relationships. Mm. Eddie Manchester, that creep mother. That he, he was uh, in charge of uh, Sukasa. Okay. That yeah. creep, creep, you know, damn creep. He was seeing one of the clients, but he had the nerve to throw me out. Wow. For nothing. Because what I did, you know how they threw me out? Because um, there was a, a, another staff member at night, he was bringing porno for the guys to see. Oh, okay, I see. All right? Yeah. They didn't want me to see none of that. Yeah. Wow. You know, they didn't want me to see none of that. And I, and I was very, so all I did was, we were cleaning, and a phone call came in, and I seen a girl, like, kind of listening to a call, and I said, don't water, I said, don't water gate, and I was cleaning, and the girl blew up on me. Wow. And then they put me on the stand, which means you got to stand against them all like that, so they get yeah. to you. And that shit, was that they just wanted me, and so happened, my sister came to visit me that day, I said, let me get my clothes, I'm out of here. Yeah. Because they're going to continue to do this. So when I got to Samaritan at this time, I, I said, I hate those chairs. Yeah. I hate this place. I'm not here for a girlfriend. Yep. I'm not here to make friends with anybody. I'm here to do, I'm not here for negative people. Yeah. So if you tell me anything or you do anything wrong, and I got tested at this, you got 15 minutes to tell the staff members before I, I tell them. Yeah. You know? Because I'm not here. I want to do mine and get out of here. Sure. Right? So... As I went through treatment to an uh, induction, the hardest thing was for me to get out of induction, which means, uh, I mean, not induction, orientation, which means you learn the tools. You, I knew all that. Already. Yeah. I knew. But they, you have to do a break, image breaker before you go to the middle level. Mm. And they wanted me to dress up as a woman, and that was so hard for me. <laughs> that was so hard for me. I, mean, <laughs> I almost didn't do it. But then they came and they got me a female suit and they put a wig on me and they put a thing here. And, and the guy I was with and his son and his father was director of Huntsport Multi Service Methodology. Yeah. Right? So that's why he got along with me real good. But he offered me a job again once I got out of there. Yeah, and I could. And he was all happy and gay. And I said, look at it. I said, it was so hard to work on heels. So we had to go walk around the middle, the middle pier. That's what they call me. Yeah. And man, it was so hard for me, but I did. It took me like half hour, but I did it. <laughs> and sure. then uh, they called me Miss Delphire. You know, Miss so, Delphire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Roman. His name was Roman. So from there, everybody thought I was going to be an orientator, but they give you job. You know, community. You know what therapy the community is. Yeah. Right. The community within the community, you have to earn everything. It's a duplication of life. Sure. So, so what it is is they gave me little jobs here and there when I applied for better jobs. Yeah. And then even Robert Rufino, one of, one of my good friends there, he said, man, why are you helping that girl? But they asked me, how do I do this? Yeah. The people that got the position I asked for asked me for help. And I said, well, you do this and this is how you do it. And Robert Rufino said, he said, First of all, why are you helping her? You know, that job should have been yours. I don't understand why you help her. I said, because she asked me. Yeah. Because she, it wasn't, she wasn't the one that made the decision. Sure. You know? So then when I made it in me to peer, right, before I even got to upper peer, which is when you start getting ready for re-entry to move out. Oh, okay, I see, yeah. Right? So... I had my counselor with loss. See, he 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 went. He did treatment in in, in the hills where you know like we had a campus in the hills out there. You know, he did treatment out there from uh, 
uh, what they call it, the street, uh, the highway, uh, Queens, I give them there. Oh, Forest Hills? No, no. It, it's on uh, Richmond Hill, next to it, the highway um, that goes to the airport. Um, uh, oh, the, is it the, uh, it's not the B, is it the BQE? No, no the QE goes into, uh, to, 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 uh, 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 to Staten Island. Um, oh, I, uh, I, I, Van, I know what you're talking uh, about. Van Wick. Oh, Van Wick, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's Van Wick. So it's Van Wick session right there, but the, the Richmond Hill, MTAR, where I was at, that's where people would detox. Oh, okay, okay. The I other see. ones are basically crackheads and all that other shit on the other end. And they go up to the mountain, to the mountains and everything like that. You know, so he went to treat he, with a friend of mine that stood in my house. He was a Latin kid, so with me in my house. Yeah. I helped him out when he was in the street. So my counselor was cool with me, Miguel. Yeah. Really cool with me. And do, do you want me to expedite this a little faster or what? Um, th th no, this is, this is, this is fine for now. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so, um, what happened was that, that he, he was just waiting for me to blow up and, and when I, and the guys kept trying to hold me down. So I didn't get in trouble. One time they, they asked me to bring a guy to court right here and he tried to say, oh, take me to my house, I'm going to give you some money, this and that. On the way back, which is a two-hour ride, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I said, you know you're going to have to touch that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I said, I'm going to give you 15 minutes. I'm going to get We went in. He didn't say nothing. I said, well, they got to try me. Yeah. yeah. They called him. They put him on the contract punishment, you know what I mean? Then that night in group, Steve Sachs, he became also a good friend of mine after treatment. He was assistant director. He stood for the group. He oh, said, okay. what? He said, what did you see in him that made you think you couldn't ask him that? Yeah. Why? Well, he wanted to know. You know what I mean? So, you know, he seen that I was for real, man. I, you know, um, the hardest thing was getting off my plan. Every two weeks, they will bring you down. When they get down to 50, they start bringing you down at five. It took yeah. about four months, right? And I used to wait for the, the real problem. But no, they give you most real. They give you medication to bring you down to the first. I never got, I only, I only didn't see for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. One time I got messed up. You know, that was my fear. I see. But other than that, I didn't feel no body pain. Wow. That's you know good. what I mean? But I was weak. Zero to 10, I was weak as hell. Yeah. They had to even help me going up. Wow. I was so weak. I was drained. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, so we, they sent me on the bread run with another guy up Forest Hills. Yeah. Right? And I, it was about 8 o'clock in the morning, and, I, and I, we're going up Forest Hills. And I see people going to a train station, and people walking around. Like a big light came. Huh. You know? It's, oh shit, this is life, man. Yeah. Wow. Everything came out of me. Wow. Everything came out of me. You know, I was free of everything. Wow. And and, and I seen life on life's terms, and I, I did, you know, going to work, and when I got back, I was really happy. I wasn't having pain. I was nothing. I was feeling a little stronger. I said, wow, this is what life is about. So I started not moving a little faster. Okay, yeah. Okay. So we had to have go through a who am I training, who am I? And during that training, the vocational uh, person, you know, I asked them, why didn't you guys ever give me the jobs that I asked for? Yeah. She said, we know you can run this place. We know you can run it. If we had given you a good job, then what yeah. else were we going to give you? Yeah, 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 sure. What else? We allow you to work on you. Yeah. What do you need to do now? So I say I have some training. I'm not going back to the advertising, to, you know, to the advertising field. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, because it's very active. You know, 
So I said, I, I would prefer to continue training. Yeah. I said, okay, cool, I'll make them up and everything. So I even got my money. They give you money every entry for clothes, when you look for work and everything like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. At, which is really your own money. Sure. Because they're the biggest thief. Uh-huh. You know, those programs are the biggest thieves. Uh-huh. The biggest dolphins are those programs. Yeah. That's why I didn't work for them. They actually sure. didn't work for them. I said, no. Right? I got my money when I was in middle pier. I see. Wow. But I said, I in need to go to huh? training. I need yeah. to do my thing. So then, now, a lot of people that want to keep me from, from upper pier, they just kept a lot of jealousy. Yeah. My staff member came one time, he took, because they put you on the board structure board, they put you peers by peers by peers. Yeah. He came, he took my name, and he put it on the upper peer. Bam. Okay. He said, you're an upper peer. Yeah. You know, because they kept denying me because they wanted, they, they're trying to punish me. The only way they got to me was taking my passes. Wow. You know? What would you? What all would you get passes for? Uh, to go to see my mother. You okay, know, I see. You know, go out. You know, you get first. You get eight hours. Then you get. But my eight hours were two, four of them were on the train. I see. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So then you know you get more than that. Then you get overnight. Then you get weekends. You know, like that. Sure. I didn't have to get all that because by the time I got my my upper pier, I was already ready to go on reentry. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. already now I have. Of my, I had a job in harm reduction. Yeah. Right? Uh, well, I had a volunteer job in harm reduction. Okay, right? I see. So it was good for me because um, I wanted to get out of the damn house anyway. So they sent me to 53rd Street. That's because you have two re entries. You have one, I believe, over there by, by um, in Rich, uh, in, Richmond uh, Hills. Van Wick. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and then you have one on fifty uh fifty third street. That's okay. the one I went to. Sure. So, um and it's just before Lexington in the middle like that. So a nice building. So I came, I would go back and forth, then I'll do my program, go to my group, whatever. I continue to get more training. See I got a lot of trains while I was over there. Oh, okay, I see. So the only trainings I couldn't get was because I wasn't working in a field like the, the confidential laws and all that. Oh, okay, okay. Certain, you, you have to be working yeah, in a field. Yeah, you have to be working stuff. in a field referred by your supervisor. Okay, I see. So, Greg, my friend, that also graduated from Samaritan, signed those so I can go on these other trainings. Oh, wow, okay. All right, so I, there you go. Now I'm getting these trainings still. So what I'm getting, I volunteer before you know it, right? When I, you know, reentry, like like I said, I only, I, I was getting my training with, you know, because I was actually doing the job. Yeah. I was getting my confidential, my laws, my uh, partner notification, all these trainings that you need when you're on the job. I got that. All right. But quickly, I got hired. You know, I got hired quick. At a harm uh, reduction place? Yeah, at an interview. Uh, um, Harm Reduction Educators of New York. I, I think that's what it's there. It's like, so that was, uh, huh? was that like 1990? I'll tell you right now. Oh, okay. I got my volunteer one right here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, with my long hair right there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Wow, yeah. Uh, you see? It was uh, uh, it's called Nairi, right? Nairi, okay. Okay. And it's uh, New York Harm Reduction Educators. Okay, I see. Yeah, and over here, is, I think this is my staff member one. Oh, there's a volunteer one. It's when I was volunteer, and I have another one that became a staff member. You know, uh, so there, uh, um, Steve Sachs was afraid that I was going to work with needles. Okay, yeah. I was going to work with active addicts. I he see. was a little afraid of that. Sure. But since, since, there was another graduate from Samaritan Middle's dad, Greg Piero. Yeah. He said, I'm in good hands. Okay. Yeah. You know? Because you're going to watch out for me. Yeah, he sure. Him, he says, watch out for him. So, because even though Steve, I was going to leave, I was going to leave Samaritan Middle to go into, um, right here, uh, um, 
the uh, 163rd Street Project, something, because I remember when they were going to start it. Project Return, that's a matter of minutes together. Uh, oh, I forgot the name. It's on 173rd Street right here. 173rd Street, okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I was going to be one of the first ones to go there. Yeah. And I was first in Surround Village. That's for HIV people. Yeah. Um, I lost my, my thought on that. Uh, Steve Sack was afraid. Uh, but I was going to leave because they wasn't equipped to deal with somebody that was sick with HIV in, in main treatment. I see, I see, I see. You know, the hard work, the always work, and the waking up, then, you know, all these grooves, all that, you know, stress that comes with it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I told them, listen, you know, I was ready to leave to, uh, what's his name, anyway. So, I was in the front desk one time, you know, the people that are coming in, the signatures, everything, yeah. talking to them. And Steve Sachs came down the steps and he just passed through. And as he passed through, he said, you know, you you can do this. You know, you can do this. You can do this. You know, like I heard him saying that, like he can do this. Yeah. Like, you know, he was in his own mind saying, you know, he can do this. Yeah. I picked that up and I, said, I ran with it. I said, man, I want to stay here. Yeah, yeah. I want to stay here. So he spoke at my third anniversary. Oh, and, wow. and, and then they, you know what I mean? And he says, you have to make an impact. So we became close after treatment. I see, I you know? see. And I'm still close with my director, Anita Sinch. Okay, yeah. She's my face with my Facebook. She also was my mentor. Mm. You know, when I became a, 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 a super Asian prison project supervisor, yeah. I send them a nice letter, thank you, and I send them my ID. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, and they, she framed that. She said she, wow. they framed it because it was well written. That about my thank you, my gratitude to, to the clients. Sure. This letter's for the clients. Sure. You know, um, something made me write it, I wrote it. Yeah. I thanked her, you know. Because uh, I was a <clears throat> borderline diabetic there, so they, you know, treated me for that. They gave me two hours bed rest after lunch. Oh, okay. Now yeah, they yeah, started yeah. working with me. Yeah, you sure, know? sure. Okay, so, you know, treatment became fast and rapid. When I tell you about Miguel, one time I came and I got mad, I, scold, I, I called the meeting, I called, because we were running the house, now I'm a coordinator. Yeah. I am, I am senior orientator. Senior orientator is a coordinator. Okay, I so see. I'm just on the level of every coordinator in the house. So on the weekend, we used to run the house staff member. There was one staff member there to do paperwork projects. Yeah, sure. You know, but we ran the house. I see. On the weekends, you know, coordinators ran the house. So if, when you're not on pass, you're running the house. Yeah. All right, so I, I, I did the, the harm reduction. I got all the training. And before you know it, I was going to Osborne to do groups. Wow, okay. Because I still wanted to keep doing my groups, you know, for, for people with HIV. Sure. And a guy named Walter was working there. And he kind of seen me in the way I was. And he wanted me to work in Osborne. Well, what, and what's Walter's name? Do you remember his last name? Nieves, I think. Oh, okay. I was thinking of a different Walter. Yeah, Walter Nieves. Okay. I think. So, um, he's the one that <coughs> offered me the supervisor job. Oh, I see, I see, I see. You know? Yeah. So, uh, that's the way everything happened. So, I, I, I quickly advanced through reentry, through everything. And then every, every week I had to go give urine. In Queens, I was at dinner. Wow, every, in every Queens. Every Wednesday, yeah. Well, right, you Richmond have to go Hill. to Richmond Hill. Yeah, I have to go because we had a, a group of people that were already living out. Oh, okay, okay. But now you want to live out. I see. So you're out of 53rd Street at this point. Yeah, at this point I'm out because they living went to the visit Bronx. my mother's house and they seen that she had room for me, everything like okay. that. Okay, boom. I see. So I I'm see. out. Now, but I'm, I'm, now I'm working, now I'm taking care of business. 
now I graduate. Uh -huh. I graduate quick. Instead of the three years, I did my 17 months and I was up. Oh, wow. Okay. The so whole 17 program. months, the whole program. Wow. From the initial intake through graduation, 17 months. Yeah, wow. that was it. I did the whole program, you know, and, and and that was it. Then I kept taking my training. So yeah. Let's get back to this. This is my testing. Oh, I see. I certification. See. This is from the, the, the City of New York Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Wow. Bureau of HIV and AIDS Prevention and, and Control. Yeah. HIV Testing Unit. Everybody uh -huh. Look at that. Look at that, yeah. See? I see, yeah. That's very important. Right? Uh, okay, the disease entitled pro infection disease <coughs> entitled program. There's another hepatitis C in that. And, and another thing to do with hepatitis, hepatitis I got. Oh, I see. Okay, ABCs of hepatitis. Yeah. Yeah, again, because you know you got renewed stuff. That's right. No, uh, this doesn't mean that. This is one of the things that we got with the Ghetto Brothers. You know? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. This is a, the letter given to us by uh, uh, the New York State Department of Alcohol. Okay, March 6, 2006. Look yeah. at that. Okay. Uh, this is the one that certifies you and makes you a faculty member. Oh, okay, I see. You see, it makes this sign right there. Okay, yeah, look at that. So, you know, to make you faculty members. You know, Oasis, they give you a letter. It's Oasis. Oasis is the training? No, yeah, that's a... Uh, program? Alcohol? No. Office Ashton, of and, uh, Alcohol and Substance. Damn, I can't forget what Oasis is. I, I gotta remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta remember. I, man, I lost it. Of course, with everything of that, you know I do a lot of things, man. I, I just love to learn. That's right. Certification affiliation certified to Evarito Romas successfully completed the instructors of, of and is certified to teach the National Point and Insurance Reduction course, six hours uh, PIRP course in the state of New York, this gets this is my license to oh, do the okay. defensive driving. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. So you can you can teach that too, huh? Wow. Okay. This is one given to me for my work, artwork. Okay. Casa Promesa. Freehand drawing and painting. Oh, wow, look at that. Right? Yeah. See, the things you didn't know, but you thought that Stan is the only one that can do it. <laughs> no, 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 I know you. I know you're in artist too yeah okay this is a this is a good one this is a, a New York link legal and cultural issues effective HIV services delivered to immigrants oh wow oh, that's another important you have to learn how to deal with immigrants one. and the services wow see when you you have to I had connections with immigrants so if people sure. came to me that have Im Im immigrant problems there was a program called Ryan Nana on the Low East Side yeah. that I was well connected to. Like I said, I was well connected. Okay, sure, um, sure, sure. And I felt so bad for the person that, that they hired over me. Yeah. Um, uh, cause that, 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 that witch, yeah. you know, uh, she wanted to bring somebody from the outside instead of leaving it from inpatient. Yeah. Right? Um, I was no longer running the unit. She was. But still, I was running a unit because everybody came to me. Sure. Um, that's why she was threatened by me. She tried to get me out there, and she couldn't do it. You know, so the girl that they put in charge, I felt sorry for her. Because when she would go to meeting, nobody paid no mind to her. They yeah. were asking for me. Yeah. Wow. Everywhere she went, they were asking for me. She yeah. said, I'm, I'm useless there. She was telling me, I'm you. Everybody's acting for you. Yeah. Wow. They don't pay no man to me. They don't want you. Yeah. She said, I'm useless. I said, I feel bad for you. Because that's the one she put. That's the she put you in. Wow. 
Let me check a telly, one of the best trainings out. Check a telly, HIV testing in New York State. Wow, okay, yeah. More. More, right? This is a, a beginning, beginning one in 2001, uh -huh. 2006, still learning. Training included the following topic. List the core elements of, uh, of, the, of the Department of Health guidelines, right? Describes um, streamlined options for preparing clients for testing. Oh, this is my, oh, this is the one where I got the job. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. No. Determine the patient who is benefit from the, the depth, uh, the depth pre-test counseling, because I was also a pre-test counselor. Oh, I see, I see. To get people ready for the test yeah, and all of that. Yeah, you because gotta, you got to do, you know, um, and, and they gave me a number and everything. Even even in my case management job, yeah. sometimes when we had too many people, I would put them in my office and do the testing counseling. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I would do it, you know, and help out, you know. Yeah. I was like that. I even learned to register people because if somebody was there, nobody would, I, let me register you and let me take care of you. Because when I was back running the place, I said, "Why, why didn't you treat that client to another, another, another counselor, case manager?" Oh, he's not in my case. I said, "Everybody's in your case Uh huh. Everybody. Uh huh. You all you gotta do is register the person, go get their chart, look at the last note. Yeah. And then treat him. See if he need blood work. Yeah. And let him know his last test results, whatever it is, and and cater to his needs, and that's it. Yeah. Everybody is your caseload. Uh huh. You understand? People get confused about that. Anyway, this is very. This one, check and tell you, always gave good training. Yeah. I, I yeah. became a good friend for one person there. Uh, Samaritan so Village. This oh, is my. Uh, there okay. we go. 53rd Street reentry certificate. Yeah. Look at that. Proudly awarded to a uh, certified Barito Roman. In recognition of his of his uh, success, completion of the residential treatment and advancement to aftercare. Uh huh. Aftercare is when I tell you you live out. Yeah, yeah. I see. Wow. Overview of HIV infections and AIDS. Okay. Then another one overview of hepatitis A, B, C. Another overview. Okay, another overview. Yep. But you always got to stay. You, things change all the time. That's right. Oh, man, this is a lot. Discuss primary care issue. This is uh, awarded to me in adherence for adherence issue for HIV clients. This is uh, teaching them how to, if I'm correctly, pharmaceutical treatments of HIV. This, this, okay, this, let me read it out. Yeah, sure, sure. Discuss primary care issue. In the treatment of HIV, review a pharmaceutical treatment for HIV and discuss implementation for adherence. Explore the impact of substance use. Uh, now it's called use, not abuse. Yeah. On treatment adherence, right? Then list strategies for including family and support resources to enhance or enhance. And for enhanced adherence, okay. Wow. Discuss the importance of the case management to in treatment adherence. Teach people how to why they have to keep taking their medication. Uh -huh. Teach them how to take the medication. Like one one guy, one of my clients said, I'm always throwing up in the morning, this and that. Yeah. I said, Why don't you try drinking it with soda? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the juice is making you throw up the acid. Yeah, sure. Maybe the acid, and, you know, makes you throw up, you know what I mean? I, 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 and then I, one of my clients, when I became a case manager, I said, I said what's, what's the problem, this and that? And he said, probably welfare problem. I said, no, no, that's my problem, too. Yeah. He said, really? Nobody ever told me that. I thought I was here just for... From my chest, you know, just to see how my blood work is. No, no. I said, any problem that you have, you tell me, I'm going to help you with. I see. I used to have people with, uh, my clients that had kids that had problems. 
Yeah. That were using. I yeah. had to bring him in and counsel all of them. Wow. Right? And then I put one in the family unit and another one in the adult, in the uh, uh, teenage unit. Oh, you understand? Okay. I see. So I see. they can come and group and learn how to stop what they're doing. So wow. now, now, because the family, the, the person, the mother, like this particular mother, you know, that was that was affecting her. I don't want her uh -huh. to relapse. For she sure. didn't even know. She she didn't te she didn't she didn't trust counselors. She didn't trust case managers. Yeah. And I say that name, my real correct. Yes. Yeah, sure. Real correct. And she came to me. And said, oh, I didn't know. I said, listen, I want to help you. Yeah. Everything you say, uh, everything a a a counselor or case manager promises, they have to keep. Yeah. They have to keep. I kept on my promise, and before you know it, this girl was clean. She didn't get her pickups. I said, wait, you've been clean how long? I called over there. Why has she got her pickups? Yeah. I did that a lot. I called people. I said, why have my client got the pickups? I, I used to go to bat a lot for my clients, you know? Sure. And my administrator knew that. That would challenge him, too. Yeah. Poor man. After this, I'll tell you what. And, you know, I... She got her pickles. She said, thank you, I got my pickles. Yeah. And now I'm going, she ended up only going two days a week. Wow. You know, and instead of six days that she was going. Sure. I hear this. Yeah, I, I, I challenged my administrator one time because uh, that same girl, Maria Correct, she came, you know, before they come to see anybody in the unit, because we had everything the hospital had. Yeah. Right? So she went for the eye doctor. And... I take out a chart, everything, boom, boom, check, everything. I said, you can go now. Okay. She went. I'm walking to the dental department to see about one of my other clients. I see her sitting there. And there's still waiting. She said, no, I finished. I said, what? Huh. It was like only 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And she said, no, I finished. I said, what? I knock on the door. Yeah. Introduce myself. And I said, how could this girl be finished? Yeah. The least amount you take with an HIV person is 40 minutes uh -huh. on the eye test. I looked around. I didn't see no equipment. Oh, my God. Wow. I said, no, I'm not, sending, I'm not signing off for nobody else. Yeah. And he said, no, but you have to send them to I'm not signing off. When I went to my eye doctor, Amaro, I said, Amaro, give me a protocol. She gave me a list of the protocol that needs to be done to a person. And that's what I took to the director, uh, the executive director, and the administrator. I said, ah, this is why I'm not doing it. Yeah. Look at what they have to do. Oh, I'm not signing. Yeah. Because I have to sign off before they go to any department. I see, I see. And I didn't do it. Good so you know me, I would challenge them. Right? Yeah. I said, if anything happens to that girl and I signed off on it. It's on you. Yeah. Self-awareness. And well-being and for counselors in recovery. Oh, I have this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I think I could talk by the white that I, I probably needed a copy. Okay. Let, let me see another one. Did an exponent again. I, I took every, every training. Oh, domestic violence. You know I mean? Domestic violence. Another very important one. Right? Very important, man. You know Absolutely. What I mean? There's an understanding the nature of the dynamics of domestic violence, conducting assessment and this uh, and discussion, domestic violence with clients living with HIV, creating energy safety plans and victims. Of, you know, you have to have a safety plan. Uh -huh. I always do that. You know, you have to teach them how to have a, 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 a safety chest, which is called documents of every kid you have, uh -huh. the school. All the, you know, in case something happens that you have to get up because you have to understand when you leave, you leave. Uh -huh. You don't tell your mother, you don't tell anybody. Yeah. Because you see the, the person goes to the family, oh, where is of course. cries to the family, cries them a river, and everything like that. So you make sure you teach them how to do everything and have everything ready and set up the network necessary that when they have to leave, they have everything. That's called a safety chest uh -huh. or yeah. a treasure chest, one or the other. Sure. Right? So you have to teach them all that besides counseling them. Of course, yeah. Besides counseling them. Now, let them, uh, I'm telling you, 
New York State Department of Haze and Training Institute. Um, this is on STDs. Okay, I see, yeah. All right, this is a train on STDs, man. That's very important. Okay, this is a community HIV education training program. Uh, this, uh, this one includes um, basic knowledge of HIV, skills building activities, development and uh, development and delivery of practice, practication. That means learning how to talk to people about HIV. Okay, learning yeah. how to educate on HIV. These are letters, but we go into that letter, you know? That's right. Finish it. You didn't think I had this many, huh? No, no, I knew you had a lot, but wow, this is really, really something. Okay, okay. This is working uh, with aging population. Okay. I see. Prevention, identifying the treatment, alcohol and substance use, and supporting recovery. Working with adults. Okay, wow. Look at that, yeah. Right, because you know that you have to work with them more sensitively, you know. That's right. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, who has that? Who has that? Right? Can't clock hours. Uh, uh, this is well. This is a white t-shirt. Okay, this is damn. Understanding the importance of documentation. Okay. This is on how you document. I see. I see, and. You, you have to do a lot of documentation all the time, right? Albany is a pain in the ass. Yep. You know, they give you the money. This, is a, this, is a, uh, this one is a, the uh, result of, of training participation will. This is what they teach, right, in that session, right? Is that to, to uh, defer it? Def Oh, man, that word eats me up. What's that first word there? Let me see there. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, differentiate. Okay, there you yeah, go. That's a tongue tie, so you know how to talk to me. Whether the person on, is or has opiate abuse or dependence, right? Recognize the signs of symptoms of opiate intox intoxication, withdrawal, all it. Everything that has to do with behavioral uh aspects of a person's use abuse necessity uh, everything like that you see uh realize uh, how methadone is utilized as well as the dosing drug interactions benefit gain and understanding of how more recent treatments such as uh, uh no traxism, whatever it is yeah 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 and uh, 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 you know, uh, purifying, purifying, whatever. Are utilized, Con construct the treatment um, strategy to opiate dependent patient on on current available options. So that means again, understand everything that's happening with the person's opioid use, because there's behaviors that you gotta pick up. I see. I see. I see. Everyone always picking their face, always doing like that. Basically, it's a sign of crack use. Okay. You know the loss of weight, crack use sure. besides HIV. Sure. You know, I have one one of my clients that she was across the street smoking in the crack in the bathroom, and they didn't want to come out. They called me. One of your clients is in here. Had to go across the street. When she heard my name, in my mouth, she came out. Oh wow! Okay. You know, yeah. I tell you, I was a strict, strict, strict. Yeah. But I was the one you needed to get clean. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm the one you needed. So yeah, if you wanted to do the right thing, I'm your man. Yeah. If you were trying to play games, I wasn't your man. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't yeah. your man because I'm gonna catch you at every turn. I see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then don't call me from jail. <laughs> okay. So there's another. One. My God, I didn't need so much. <laughs> okay. This is almost the same. Well, behavior is psychological. It's almost the same as that one. I see. Okay, this one I know is a copy by the white. Let me get it on 
This is working with adolescents. Okay, working with adolescents. And yeah. Adolescent and addiction. I see. Yeah. Okay. HIV Family Center Case Management, what I was telling you about. Oh, sure, sure, You work sure, with sure. the whole family. You understand? That's you just right. don't work with the client. But the family's problem is your problem also. Uh -huh. I had a client that they were selling his pills, his medication. You know, oh, he, wow. every time he got a check, right, they were, they were some taking of it, some huh? of it. They were abusing him. I had yeah. to move him out. Wow. I moved him out myself. Yeah. I went down to OM on 33rd Street. I went, I got, oh, I got him in a place by Petrona Park. I put him in, at that time I had a station wagon. I put yeah. all his stuff there. Boom. You know, he was on his way to Puerto Rico. They talked him back to getting, going back home. He did. Mm -hmm. I'm going in to get, on a Saturday, I'm going to get something from my office. Yeah. Because that's my day off. Somebody, I guess, was sitting waiting for me here. Oh, wow. And he was smoking. He used to smoke white wine. I said, oh, that one time, he used to come from New Jersey. Yeah. Right? After that, he moved to New Jersey. After yeah. all that. And he still used to come. I said, you want me to get your program in the lower side? You want me to get... No, no, no. He wanted to come see me. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. You know what I mean? He wanted to come see me. So one time, I said, don't come. I'm going to call you. Yeah. I'm going to do the session over the phone. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm smoking a little joint. I said, okay, look. I got you. I talked to the doctor Chalera, the yeah. director, Dr. Chalera. Give this guy marijuana or something like that, I think it was called. It's like marijuana. Yeah. The pill. Because this guy, if he gets caught buying, he won't survive jail. Uh huh. You know? For sure. He won't survive. He was skinny. You know, they were, he, they, were, they, they were abusing him as well. Imagine in jail. Yeah, yeah. The slap him city. I didn't want him to get busted. Yeah. So I talked to the doctor to, you know, hook him up. And that's what happened. You know? And that was way before the marijuana license thing like that. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Wow, wow I still got more to go here. This is uh, the one in addiction medicine. Okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. Addiction medicine. I see, yeah. Right? This is a CPR training, of course. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I copied for this. I have to send them on. Because you know you have to find that drops on you. You have to know how to reset it. Uh -huh. um, this one is Addiction Medicine Knowledge Workbook 2. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. There was a workbook one earlier. This yeah, is right, workbook, workbook two. 2. Overview, oh, I think I, I did this one. Oh, this is uh, another one. Yeah, this is uh, the TV connection. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay, uh, this was given to me by the, uh, 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 the thing, uh, right? Metropolitan College. Of New York. Honors. Honor, right? I see, yeah. Oh, is that thick? That's how thick that paper thick one, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that one. Okay. This one is on uh, legal, this is good. Legal and cultural issues affecting HIV development with immigrants. So there's another one, legal. You got to know sponsorship. You got to know all that other stuff. You got to know how to help your person and that your client in every form. You got to know, like, the girl that came here, I even educated her on what she needed to do. But when they sent me, that I liked her a lot, but she just don't know English. She yeah. didn't want to work Sundays. I see. I, I we see. got along good. Okay, this is treatment of the pregnant woman in substance use disorder. Oh, wow, okay. Prevention, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Sure. And neurological substance abuse exposure. Okay, so really every aspect of things you have training on, I mean, every aspect. Check this one out. Oh, okay, yeah. There we I go. I took the training too. Absolutely. You Absolutely. gotta know how you gonna talk to somebody about being a parent if yeah. you don't know nothing about it. That's right. That's right. I mean, I am a parent, right? Yeah, sure. But now I could show them that I know. Yeah, that's right. Right? This is, I love this one. This is from Armakers. 
Okay. Loss and bereavement. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. When somebody, one of my clients lost somebody in the family, I want them to be messed up or anything like that. I had no idea. Then I go to five stages. I have to teach them about all that other stuff, educate and treatment, understanding all topics of grief and loss, mm -hmm. exploring the loss associated with the issue of alcohol and other substance during the cycle of use, mm -hmm. understanding the client's loss, understanding the client's loss. Right? You gotta know that. Yeah. And of the actual substance as a grievance process. Wow, that's a really important this is a really good one. Okay, this is our, our outreach, another outreach one that I took. Because you have to update. Sure, yeah. Developing right? new skills, enhanced yeah. outreach. Yeah. Uh, this one is another addiction medicine uh, knowledge workbook, motivational interviewing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You mentioned motivational interviewing already. That's. A, a great one to have. Yeah. Of course, there's another one. This is just a copy, I guess. Exponents over here is this is a uh, okay. Reporting upon a notification. Oh, okay. I see. I see. They didn't want to give me this one until I was working. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. See, there's reporting because you gotta know how to report. Not everybody knows. You gotta know if there's violence in the house. You gotta know. Also. Uh, when they do testing, you got to know if the person's partner is violent. I see. I see. Or, you know, he's, how he's going to react, that knowing that you're positive. You know, sure. um, you have to know how to approach. You approach to tell the person to knock on the person's door. Yeah. Hey, listen, um, I think you need to get tested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because, and then you tell them, and they probably want to kill the person, but, you know, yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's not a deadly. Now it's just a a, a, a chronic illness. It's yeah. Not a death sentence sure. Like before. Sure. Uh, workbook. Okay. Nicotine dependence and smoking. Can, this was very important. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look you know, after that. I stopped smoking, I was still spitting out charcoal six months later. Yep, I know. <laughs> This I know. It's caused harm to so many people yeah. over the last century. Okay, there's the one uh, recognition of com successful completion of the who I am. Remember I told you you had to do that tra that, that, that training who I am before you got out? Oh, so I see, really? I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was your the who I am training. That. Okay, I see. You got to know who you are. Sure. Um, this one is... Uh, Training at uh, training clock hours. I said, if you sell up this training, participant will identify psychological behavior and physical reaction of stress, learn techniques to short term stress relief and long thought. I think I, it is a copy. Yeah, it is a copy. Oh, that was a copy? That's a copy. Don't worry. Another, oh, another domestic violence one. Oh, okay. Uh, LBTG. Oh, okay, yeah, look at that one. Domestic violence in the LGBTQ community. Right? Uh, yeah. Another one with Chicka Telly. There's the Asian. You know, uh, yeah. Testing skills and procedures. Oh, okay. I see. Testing skills uh, and procedures. Yeah. I got one for a little five day training. That's where I ran to the guy. Uh, this one is survey families uh, from assessment to service training. This um, uh, proposed elements of the uh, assessment plan. Oh, this is how you make your uh, uh, psychosocial. Oh, okay, okay. How okay. make your psychosocial. Uh, you know, this is what it is. Learning to do that. I see. I see. Oh, that's a long, a long training session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long one. Direct behavior and personal judgment. Okay, let me let me read this out. Purpose of elements and assessment service plan. You know that 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 direct this uh direct observational 
versus personal judgments. Okay. Right? Yeah. Remember I told you separating? Sure. Okay, interviewing and questions, framing skills, right? Okay, Documentation yeah. techniques, distinction between goal, objective, and task. Incorporating assessment into development and goals mm -hmm. and objectives. Using client strengths and asset to in developing a service plan. Tips for successful outcomes. This is a good training. This one? Yes. This one really it sounds training. like it, yeah. You know, remember I'm in there with a lot of professionals, so Absolutely. You know, I don't know why I always stood out. We got our big mouth. <laughs> oh, no, no, because I participate. I, I sure. don't get to sit back and board just for the yeah, training. Sure. I want to learn. Cultural diversity training. Remember I told you this? Yeah, that's right. Here's another. Okay, yeah. This was heavy. This training blew my mind because we were talking about they were in the training there, I remember they were Muslim ladies. Yeah. They were Jews. Yeah. Right? So the Jew was asking the question, how could I bring a needle exchange into a Jewish community? Oh, okay, I see. The yeah. Muslim the Muslim one, she said, How could I teach how could I talk to my the other three wives? Yeah. Well, they had like three wives. Yeah. Protection. How can yeah. I talk to them? Protection. Yeah. Because you know that country, they could have more than one wife. They yeah. Afford it. So you have to try to get teach them and find ways to help them to, you know, avoid transmissions. That's right. You know what I mean? And it's not easy. It's not easy, especially because people are just close to a lot of things, man. Yeah, that's right. You know? Absolutely. Uh, still, to, still yeah, today, a, for sure. Okay, there's another one with testing procedures, pre-testing counseling, post-testing counseling, upon the notification. Okay, I see. Yeah, that. this one, right? Okay. Uh -huh. And this is from Nairi. Uh, New York State Department of Health and HIV testing, another testing procedure. Uh, this is uh, testing and training, including the, um, Article 27F, pre-HIV testing counseling, post-testing counseling, final notification, HIV reporting, right? Wow. This is all. And this uh, this training has provided New York State Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse, OASIS, um, certified that acceptable in, for the meeting of the practice for case stack. CPP, CPS. Okay. Of course, now there's letters here. You know that you have seen letters from yes, from and you have read a lot of them. Yes. You have read some of them, right? Well, yeah. You never yeah. read the student one. Not, not on you camera. Read, you, o you, only in, only you off read, camera. Okay, let me let me see what I can read one. Uh, this is from Dia Baris. All right, this is uh. When I spoke to the speaker school, thank you for the for speaking to us about the HIV and AIDS. I really learned a lot about this virus. Your information was great for us. We we uh, this is how kids right. We uh, young adults should really learn about this, and those who fully understand it, and we must fully understand it. We really. One, I don't know. We really don't, I guess, don't want uh, to uh, put ourselves in the in the in, in that kit of in that kind of situation. Oh my God! By by your information, you help us prevent this situation. Thank you for talking your time, uh, taking your time, and speak to us. Of course, we can at least get to. The teacher okayed it to me. You know what I mean? That's one letter. Yeah. And I want uh, I just, I'm just, uh, I just want to say thank you 
for coming to our class and giving us information we need we needed to know about HIV and AIDS. I have a friend who has HIV and because of you I learned some new things about his life. Mm. Well, thank you again. Hope you come to visit us again. A lot of schools call me back. Yeah. A lot of schools call me back. Um, this, this kid, well, this kid won't be reading. Oh, that's a long one, yeah. Yeah, then I said, uh, uh, I would like to thank you uh, for coming to my help class yesterday, fifth period, and speaking to my class about HIV and AIDS. I am really sorry that you have that. Remember, you have to do exposure sometimes. Sure. So they could be affected. I, you know, I think these, these kids really, really, you know, you think they don't learn, you think they don't hear, but here's the result. They do. Yeah. They do. Um, you were in the second class, I think, when we, had, we were taking the kids where I had them right there where I needed them. Uh, there's another one. Thank you for coming to our class. Speaking about HIV and AIDS. But there are one letter or two around there that, oh, there's the one from Washington, Derby from the, from the principal. Oh, that's right. I remember. That's a good one. This is, uh, this is let me see. It says, uh, uh, John, no, this is from Mr. John Reed, Director of Outreach, Files, and Needs. Because I learned about schools. I, I never knew. I'll tell you, when I was speaking to schools, I went to schools. I had no idea there were schools. Yeah. Okay. On behalf of, uh, of the teachers right there, Lindbergh, there are a bunch of names here. Uh, health teachers, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for sending, uh, this is they sent it to the President D, sending a group from your organization to speak to our students on health education class, providing emotional, spiritual, and psychological support to affect uh, with their life threatening illnesses. All students at Washington Irving High School are required to take a, a semester of health education. Part of this is a teacher that invited me to the boat ride. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, because I went back to so many schools that they already got my name went around. Yeah, and, and I look in high school, Richmond, a, a lot of them. And so at the end of the year, they all have a boat ride. Oh, I see. I the see. teachers. Yeah, I was invited to that boat oh, ride. Oh, wow. I went, and I went, I, and it was a uh, nice. Twenty Third Street Pier. Oh shit. So anyway, the student is uh, required to take a semester. Anyway, let me finish with. We greatly appreciate this group wellness and volunteer to come to Washington Irving to spend time urging our students to avoid serious life threatening diseases that may affect them. That may affect them. For the past three years, the group has been has been our also. That means they've been there already. They have a they have a linkage. Yeah, know? they have a linkage. Uh, there's one. I want to find the one in here. Hey, right? I think it's in the binder, maybe. Right? Yeah, it is in the binder. You already, you already know. It. You know what I got here? I save. Yeah. I save daily this this right here. This, <laughs> yeah. this is a treasure. How much money do you think I will get for it? <laughs> Probably a good amount. Huh? Right? For a docket number and, and a signature. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I've been holding on to this year. <laughs> I, I haven't. Uh, okay, let's just read. Oh, that might that might be the one you're looking yeah. for. Look, they're all good. Yeah. They're all good, yeah. But, but yeah. I know the one. I know the. The one that blew my mind was when they were all fighting when I got there. Yeah. They were fighting in, in the auditorium. I said, "Oh my God, I'm not gonna do this, man." And it was one of my best ones, man. Grandites. It says, uh, "It says, dear, Ro dear Mr. Roman, on behalf of our students and faculty members." Who have the great opportunity to hear you and Scott uh, Field speak on, on Wednesday, November 21st, uh, 2001. 
at our AIDS Awareness um, Assembly Program. I want to thank you for one of the most re re reventing, is that the word? Uh, R I V E T. Oh, oh rivet, I think riveting. Riveting, yeah. See, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Riveting experience I have ever participated in. in. In all of my 33 years of teaching at, uh, at Brandeis High School, I have never witnessed a more emotionally charged event. Our students were not only uh, totally, oh, not only totally absorbed and uh, and uh, actively involved in your in the program, but they were dramatically moved, many to tears. I can never remember a time I have to leave the group in order to get a box of tissues for students wow. who was so emotionally overwhelmed that they had that they began to sob uncontrollably. This phenomenon occurred throughout the day in each of your class if your in each of your seven uh, each of the each of the seven classes you addressed. Wow. Perhaps the most moving thing of all was watching our, our students line up at the end of the session in order to give you a hug and share the stories with you. That's God. For this and all that you and Scott do, give us, give to give to our students, we extremely are grateful. Wow. This is very nice. That, that is. is. Uh, that is. But those are the type of letters I was getting from the school. Wow. And I don't even know if if high schools still do anything like this. Yes, they do. They, they have do? to. They oh, have okay. to. Because that's what I was telling you about. Because you do it in art and all that. But yeah. You know, if, if there's a way that you can try to get it to, you know, to make it to help also. Yeah. Then because every all schools have to give a certain amount of health education hours. I see, I see, I see. And they usually do it at the end of the year. Uh, I see, you cram it in at the end of the year. I see. Yeah. So wow. anyway, these are these are just we took the whole session in it. Wow. And there's I'm sure there's more around there, but you know. Um you know, oh is uh, Samaritan. Okay, there we go from Samaritan. Yeah. See, this is uh, I'll read it to you. It says uh, Samaritan Village certification of graduation. Uh, Evarito Roman has achieved the goal of responsibility, maturity, and self-awareness set by Samaritan Village, and has kept trust. In and been honest without uh, with others, right? I see. And has shown the consistency and strength prescribed in the Samaritan Village philosophy. The Samaritan Village has a philosophy. Yeah. That we used to say every day, and it talks about building up the bricks of your broken life. Mm -hmm. You know, but it shows also that you have to be honest with yourself before you can be honest with others. Yeah. Right. It also talks about rising from the ashes of your defeat mm -hmm. to take your rightful place in society. Yeah. Because once you have done this, you will be society. Yeah. You understand? That is part of the philosophy that goes in there. We live that philosophy. I still live that philosophy. Sure. You see, you have to be honest with others before you can be honest. You have to be honest with yourself before you can be honest with others. I already have continued to build the breaks of my broken life. Yeah. I have done that. I continue to do it in the things I do because that is my philosophy. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So when people want to question me on things, they don't know this. Yeah. They don't know that that's I live this. That's right. So if I say I was somebody, I'm not going to lie about it because yeah. I was somebody. Sure. Because sure. If, I, if I'm lying, I'm actually going about my, I'm going against my belief, yeah. you know, 
or they add to the other one, no, you know. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. There's the Associate of Arts and Human Services. And it's amazing with just an associate. This this associate is more than than four years in another school. Oh yeah, sure. Because sure. it cuts out it cuts it cuts out anything that has to do with associates in another school. I see. That I nonsense see. is gone. It goes strictly into human service. I have people from Columbia University copy my work. Yeah, yeah. That they should get the intern. I have people with masters that were in the other units that the, the assistant director used to bring to me. I mean, assistant director, the administrator used to bring to me so I can help them. Wow. I could help them. Yeah. Because I'm like you see this along with this makes me more valuable than anything anybody else has. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. that's why I held the positions I held because I, you know, I, I'm i well trained in it. Yeah. And the thing is that, you know, with clients, when you open up your mouth, they know where you're coming from. Yeah. If you're full of it, they're going to call you on the other spot. They want to hear you. Shit. Yeah, sure, sure. But when you talk about Things they can identify with. You know, when you talk about throwing yourself on the floor, throwing up in the cell, going under, going under a, a chair just to find a cool place to try to get five minutes of sleep because you're kicking a habit. Uh -huh. You know, when they know about going into a gallery, about trying to suck up some cotton, when you talk about sleeping on the train, when you talk about sleeping and shooting guys, when you talk, and they know that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And then they see you in a position of, uh, 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 of responsibility. That's right. Not power, because I have told a lot of people this. Power, people that have power for self-gain is abuse. Uh-huh. When you have power to help others, that's true power. Yeah, sure. When you use your power to help other people, that's real power. But when you use it just for yourself, for your selfishness, that's not real power, Agreed. you know, and, and, and that's all. Uh, I'm sure there's a few other things around here, but I can recover enough, right? Yeah, we've covered a lot. Uh, um, so I don't know what you do want to do next. You know? Well, I think I think this is a good stopping place for today because the battery yeah. is gone will, again. Well, we'll it will be in a little bit, but do you have any? Any final thoughts you'd like to end today's session on? Well, that I'm an abstract person. Yeah. You know, people look at me and they say, ah, you know, you, you didn't do that. Ah, oh, you didn't do that. You, didn't, you can't draw. You didn't do that. Oh, you can't DJ. Okay. I'm a DJ now. Yeah. Right? DJ right here. That's right. There we go. It's a really cool shirt. Yeah. DJ Shay. That's, that's me. That's right. You see, you can never say you can't do something. And then you can't lie about the things you have done. Yeah. You know, because all my life, people have, I don't know what it is about me, even in Paddleball, people have always challenged me. It's because maybe they're threatened. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But I, I'm not that type of person. You know, I, I'm, I don't. You know, go say, oh, I'm better than you. Yeah. I keep quiet. Because if I didn't expose any of these things to you, you would have never known I'd done it. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You would have never known. You know, and, and, and like when I used to go, I used to date doctors, when I used to date directors, I used to date, you know, people that at one time I thought was impossible to date. Yeah. Because remember, you attract according to your level of life. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure. Because I was in a certain position, I attracted certain people. Yeah. Right? And certain females and certain friend, male friends, you know? When, you, when I used to tell them, listen, I have a drug history, they never saw that in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if I told them, they didn't see it in me. Yeah. Because people see where you're at now 
not where you were. Yeah. So people that live in the past with all that garbage, all that is holding you down. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because people are not going to judge you. Some people may judge. There's always people judging. Sure. But when you, what they see is what they're going to believe. Yeah. Change is seen, not spoken. A lot of people come out and say, oh, I changed. Before you know it, they use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This time I came out of jail, they didn't bother me because they seen I changed. Yeah. I came out of Samaritan Village on my passes. I changed. Yeah. You changed the way you dress. You changed the way you talk. You yeah. changed the, your friends. All that is changed. Yeah. That's all I got. Well, thank you so much.